Hey everyone, welcome to our exclusive seller representation agreement uh, video. So in this video, we're just going to be going over the different fields and uh, the document as a whole. So obviously in our presentation, we will go over these documents, but if at any time you kind of forget what we've talked about, uh, here's a video that can kind of refresh your memory on everything. So this is our exclusive seller representation agreement. Because there's only going to be one agent representing you in selling a home, this is a, this is the document that we use. Um, so first off, it's going to ask us for our, our name of the seller and the brokerage. Obviously, we are 2% Realty Pro. We're going to put our brokerage in there. You'll put your name in here. Very simple. Now it's going to define the property. So the land and buildings at municipal address. So this is going to be the street address and the following goods that we're going to be um, including in selling the home. So generally this becomes our refrigerator, our stove, our microwave, our um, uh, dishwashers, washer, dryer, etc. cetera, uh, window coverings ex also. So those are all different goods that we will probably include in the sale of the home. We can also include goods that are attached to the land in the buildings that uh, will not be included. So for example, if you want to keep your washer or dryer, we can include that there. Legal description will be the plan, the block and the lot, and also the unit number if it is a condominium. We definitely will find that on the back end when we pull title of the, uh, of the property. If we are representing a condo, we will either include a condominium property schedule, which we'll touch on in another video, or a country residential property schedule, which we'll also touch on in another video. Next is the part that everybody likes, the price that we're going to be selling the property for. So whatever we, we talk about, um, after we show you a bunch of the different properties that are for sale in the neighborhood and the city, that are comparable, we can discuss a price that you guys are agreeable with and that's where we put it in. And then finally, we also have our proposed possession date. So generally we do between 15 and 60 days. Uh, anything over 60 days becomes a little bit unattractive for a buyer coming into the, the, um, into the purchase of a new property. But uh, we can also do immediate if it's vacant. Um, it's very open and available for you guys to uh, decide on how long you want the possession date to be. Our agency relationship, this includes the exclusive right to whichever agent will be representing the sale of the property. And we will also have the date that the agreement begins on. So this being um, generally about three months from the start to the finish. So if this is January 1st, for example, we go February, March, April 1st will be the end date. Generally, we do 90 days because over 90 days becomes a little bit unattractive on the MLS. And if we want to go above that, we generally will take down the old listing put up a new listing and make it look fresh and new, get some new eyes on it. And it, uh, it's definitely a technique that works. We discuss our responsibilities. We go over this in the consumer relationships guide, but obviously we're impartial to our dealings. We make sure the designated agent represents you, uh, meets your applicable policies and procedures, supervises the designated agent and support staff to make sure their responsibilities are met. Uh, we hold money in trust. And we also give the copy of the agreement as soon as possible after signing. So in our DocuSign video, we discuss this. As soon as you sign that document, you get one right back in your inbox. And it's kept for your records with all the signatures and initials. Um, you might not immediately get one. It will be after everybody signs the document that are required. So either your husband, your wife, um, your roommate, and also the agent signs it, you will get one in your inbox. We talk about our responsibilities. We meet our agency responsibilities in a timely manner. We market the property until the property is sold. Keep, the, keep you informed of the marketing activities. Uh, tell, the buyer, tell any buyer interested in the property that, that they are uh, your agent. Uh, well, we are your agent. <laughs> um, tell buyers of all material latent defects. Keep and negotiate your, favor and, uh, your favorable terms and conditions with the buyer. 
help you prepare and comply with the contract and sell, to sell the property and present you with all offers and counter offers and tell you relevant facts about the transaction. Then we also talk about what the services we're going to be providing you. We are a full service brokerage, so you're going to be getting all the services that anybody will provide. We install a lockbox on the property. Generally, we will check that box, yes. We will provide signage. We will do photos of the property, and we will market on the MLS, social media channels, the internet, etc., to get as many people seeing the place as possible. Your responsibilities are just to provide us with a real property report showing the current state of improvements of the property. We would like a current real property report. So if you have put a fence or a deck or anything like that, since you had your previous real property report done, you will most likely need to get a new one done that has a stamp of compliance. You'll ensure the property and its contents are against uh, loss of damage or damage, excuse me due to the causes normally insured against for similar properties, communicate and cooperate with us. It's always better when that happens. <laughs> Tell us the property's condition, status, or title changes. Tell us about any inquiries you might uh, you make or receive about the sale of the property. Uh, determine whether the sale of the property is subject to GST. Generally, new properties are. Generally, uh, previously lived-in properties are not. Uh, determine to tell us if you have any money left over after the sale of the property to cover payment of your mortgage balance. This is more for uh, buyers. During this agreement, and generally we put 7 to 14 days after the agreement ends, just give us any copies of any offers that you make or receive for the sale of the property. Your warranties and representations, you warrant uh, you have authority to sell the property as described. No one else has legal right uh, to the attached or unattached goods. So nobody else owns your washer dryer. <laughs> uh, you have told us about all third party rights to the property. All information you give is true and to the best of your knowledge. Uh, you warrant to the best of your knowledge the following are true. The landing buildings are currently being used according to municipal bylaws. Landing building improvements are entirely on the land and not on any easement right away or neighboring lands. So you didn't build a fence on your neighbor's land. Uh, it happens more than you would... Uh, than I would like to admit, but <laughs> it definitely happens. Uh, the location of the buildings or improvements meet municipal bylaws. Uh, the land and buildings are currently being used, and according to the land or the location of the buildings and land improvements meet the restrictive covenants on covenants. Excuse me, on title. You are not a non-resident of Canada, Canada under the Income Act, Tax Act. Dower consent. So if you are currently married and both people are not on title, this will apply uh, just so that your spouse is not um, selling your house without your knowing. So we have to include a dower consent. Um, but if both people are on title and married, then this generally will not be included because both people have the right to sell the property and both people will be signing this contract conflicts of interest. Uh, we talk about this in the consumer relationship guide, but I'll go over it just briefly. It is not a conflict of interest if the designated agent simply shows the property to a buyer. Conflict of interest uh, occurs when the designated agent acts as the sole agent for both you and the buyer. Uh, so if we are representing both the seller and the buyer, that becomes a slight conflict of interest, of course, because we would be on both sides of the transaction. We can remedy this via either signing a document saying that's totally fine and the agent becomes a transaction facilitator. What that means is that I or Thomas will not be negotiating on either side of the transaction or providing any information or advice to either party. Simply will be as a go between a mediator between uh, the buyer and the seller and just make sure that both parties are satisfied with the final sale of the property. Or we can also get another agent in to negotiate on the buyer's behalf, whatever makes uh, you more comfortable. Our fee and limits on payments. We go over what our fee structure is. We will offer whatever also our fee structure is. Um, and then we also talk about in the uh, 14 days after the agreement ends generally, and you enter into a legally binding contract to sell the property or the buyer was introduced to the property during the term of the agreement, you'll pair brokers. The reason that that term is in there, 
has to do with uh, a neighbor, for example, down the street that says, hey, let your property expire. We'll come in, we'll offer you this. Just cut all realtors out of the uh, transaction. Uh, that happens frequently enough that that term had to be thrown into this contract. And then you authorize us to use any deposit we hold under the purchase contract or this or this agreement towards money you owe us under the agreement uh, seven days generally is what we will put in there. Other than that, it's a very straightforward contract. Uh, one thing that I have to also touch on here is property information, notices, and permits. So we have to ask you these four questions with regards to the property, and we need you to answer as truthfully and um, to the best of your knowledge as possible. We have to ask you, are, there, are you aware of any material latent defects on the property? Do you know of any defects that would be expensive to fix? Have you received every government or a local authority notices? And do you know of any lack of permits uh, for the development of the property? Because we have to throw that into the private remarks when selling a home, just so people know, uh, for example, that a basement doesn't have a development permit or the deck uh, doesn't have a development permit or something like that. Other than that, it's a very straightforward uh, agreement. We send it to you definitely to review. And then there's room for signatures, uh, information, and that is pretty much it. So it's very straightforward. If you have any questions, you can forward me an email or uh, give us a shout. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.